Hi, it's Rich from Marvelous Ministries. Revelation here in my continued quiet time. There are some examples in the Bible of people who were in horrifying situations, yet they had peace, joy, and the love of God in their hearts. If you look around you in 2022, in the United States, we have a lot of craziness going on in the world. The world is changing quickly, and those in power will take away from you freedoms, liberty, things that we might pursue to have. I want a new car, a better car, when I need an electric car. Well, what happens in another 10, 15 years when they say there's too many people here in the country and now they're going to force mass transit on you? See, the world will take control of you. But they can't take control of your heart. Jesus came to set the captives free. For me, 40 years or so of my life, four decades, my heart was imprisoned. I'd put up walls and barriers and things to protect myself from getting hurt not realizing in my teenage years when I did this that I actually put up my own prison cell and I became trapped emotionally inside of the very walls that were supposed to protect me actually hurt me and hurt other people. Jesus came to set the captive free. The fall of 2020, after my life completely crumbled and everything fell apart, at least everything on earth. What didn't fall apart actually became stronger and better. I was, up until that point, codependent on my wife, codependent on the world and things that make me feel good. I mean, so it wasn't drugs and alcohol and wild living like the prodigal. But I still had things of the world that I used to medicate my pain. If life didn't go the way that I wanted or hoped or felt I needed, then I did activities that would allow me to escape that environment. One of them was since I was a child. I was bullied at home. I was the smallest and, and youngest in my family. And what I would do is I would jump out the window and take off. And I'd get away from the oppression in my home. Well, that habit was still there. August of 2019, I left. I was gone for 11 weeks. August 2020, I'm still gone. You see, the car accident or collision, however you want to look at it, really messed me up physically. And in 2022, we finally di diagnosed me with a traumatic brain injury on top of the... Uh, arthritis in my neck from the whiplash injury and the nerve damage down my arms and legs, hands and feet and so forth. And what it did is life finally found something to drive a wedge between my heart and my wife's. But as I was laying here, having some quiet time, life or Satan is trying to destroy what God has put together, that which is good. And maybe I've torn our hearts apart for a season, but hasn't taken the love out of my heart that still remains. I still love my wife. I still miss my wife. I love my kids, my family, and that part of my life that I used to have and enjoy every day. But I wasn't healthy emotionally. And I didn't have the proper foundation under me of Christ. God is my foundation. See, I was a Christian, but I hadn't switched or transferred from the earthly kingdom ruling my heart and my life to heaven ruling my heart and my life, leading me, guiding me giving me joy and happiness and purpose and encouraging me and so much more. But now, 
more and more every day I am drawn closer to heaven. Not longing to get off this God-forsaken planet and be there, but actually my heart's there while I'm on earth. And heaven's purpose is now my purpose. It's in my heart. It's no longer a commandment. It's in my heart to love God and to love all creation. Even those that hurt you, those that mistreat you, reject you, persecute you, whatever it may be. It's what Jesus came and did for us when we didn't deserve his love. Now to be Christ-like is to do the same, to give his love that he's given to me to those who don't deserve it like I didn't. And I still don't. It's only by grace, mercy, and the love of God that I have His love in my heart. So the world can be a storm everywhere you look. Crime, violence, inflation, political strife, divisiveness, and so many other things. Think about Paul, Joseph, those that were shipwrecked in prison, stoned or attempted to be stoned, persecuted, and yet they still continue to keep the faith and live the life, the new life in Christ that I finally am free to live. I hope and pray if you are struggling in the world, in your world, we're all in the same world and God so loved that same world that His solution for the world was not everybody coming to America. It was everybody coming to Christ. Amen.